Hello everyone and welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host, Gavin Hatch. Every day this past week, Florida has experienced some amazing weather, very nice cool weather that I enjoy myself. It's perfect park weather, so I went and spent a day at SeaWorld Orlando and you will see just how empty that park was and how enjoyable it was since it was empty and nice and cool. Getting on my car and walking through the parking lot, I noticed these signs have been recently put onto the different light posts uh, all around the parking lot as you walk towards the entrance. Now, all the local theme parks have different themed parking lots. At Magic Kingdom, you have the Villains and Heroes sections. And then at Universal, you have Spider-Man, E.T., Jurassic Park, different things like that. And they're usually relatable to a character, so you can remember where you parked your car. And I guess that's what these are here for as well, to help guests remember where they parked. But they're not characters, there's no pictures, it's just kind of like inspirational words and things that go along with the new branding for SeaWorld. The day I was there though, the parking lot was so empty, I did not have any problems finding my car when I left later on that day. Now this used to be the tram pickup and drop off location. It's, it has been used for that for quite some time. And during Christmas week, this is where they had some of the metal detectors and security checkpoints happening. Uh, so it was being utilized for that. Now it's empty as you can see, but they added some additional walls on the sides. And when I took this picture, there were some security management members out there uh, talking about what they were gonna do with the space and I guess going over plans to use it for that reason again, to have the security checkpoints there instead of further up closer to the turnstiles. I noticed the lighthouse out here in the entrance of the park has been repainted recently. They kept the same color scheme going on uh, that was used for the 50th anniversary, but of course all that logo and branding has been pulled out of the park since the anniversary celebration is over. But I do like this color, it looks good, it's a fresh coat of paint, and uh, you'll see that the park is pretty empty though up here in the front of the park. Uh, there was no one in line for tickets, there was no one at the turnstiles, there it was I felt like I was there before the park opened, but this was like at 2 in the afternoon. There was no one there. And that is why January is my favorite month uh, to visit the theme parks. If you're a Florida resident, it's the best time to go. The weather is nice, just bundle up on some days, but most of the attractions are still open and operational. Nothing really changes in the parks, and it's just a lot less crowds. If you're not a Florida resident, it's a good time to come down. Come on down. If you can take the kids out of school, um, the hotel rates are low, there's plenty of rooms, and the parks are not as crowded as you'll see, of course, during Christmas and summer and spring break. It's a great time. Now, last year, the 50th anniversary celebration concluded at SeaWorld, but this display that guests can get their photos taken in front of, uh, even by a SeaWorld photographer, is still there, which I don't know why, but it's still there. It's huge. It's really beautiful, but I don't think it belongs in the park anymore. But if you are a fan of it, Go ahead and go see it one last time before it goes away. It should be gone by now and could be gone any day. Who knows? The day I was in the park was a weekday, but right now, SeaWorld Wild Days are going on on the weekends. During Wild Days, SeaWorld invites you to enjoy the park in a whole new way as you encounter amazing animal friends. You'll explore their world like never before through fun, interactive games, up-close experiences, and fascinating learning sessions with SeaWorld's animal experts on over 14 explore zones. Now this past weekend, Wild Weekend with Jack Hanna took place on the 16th and 17th. Penguin Lovers Weekend is going to be the 23rd through the 24th. And then Sea Rescue Weekend is the 30th and the 31st. Sea Rescue is actually one of the shows that SeaWorld produces and airs on televisions nationwide. Now Wild Days is included with your park admission just like all the other events that happen at SeaWorld Orlando throughout the year. Bands, Brew, and Barbecue honoring America's heroes takes place February 13th through March 6th. Praise Wave is happening March 12th through the 26th. Um, you also have SeaWorld's Christmas celebration, Summer Nights, Viva La Musica, SeaWorld's Halloween, and uh, that's, I mean, that's really cool that they're included with park admission. And these events are really neat. They're pretty fun. They have lots of different stuff to do. Over in the Key West area of the park, I noticed that this used to be either where you got your hair braided or they did face painting, one of the two. That's gone now, as you can see there's no vendors here, it's just an additional seating area now. I wonder why that went away. Over in the back of the park near Turtle Trek, when you exit Turtle Trek, you'll see construction is going on um, near the manatee and turtle exhibit outside. I'm not sure what they're actually putting over here, but you can kind of see backstage, um, that's where they have some of the tanks for the water filtration. And I don't know if this is going to be an attraction or a store or if they're just expanding the uh, area for those animals to be in. But if you know, comment in those comments below. 
Now leaving Turtle Trek, over at Blue Horizons there was a sign out front that stated that the show was modified because of routine maintenance going on that day. I didn't stick around for the show so I'm not sure what the maintenance was exactly or how they modified the show, but it still went on which is good. Uh, but you know, it's expected to happen in January. Things like this have to happen because it's the only time where the parks are really quiet and they can get some work done such as refurbishing things and shutting things down. But at least they still provided a show and didn't have to shut the whole thing down. Across from Blue Horizons, Journey to Atlantis is closed right now as refurbishments take place. This ride usually gets shut down every January because guests do not want to ride this water-based attraction when it's pretty chilly outside. Uh, so it's a good time to shut it down to do refurbishments and maintenance on it, which is all it's, that's all it's happening. Um, nothing's being really added, nothing's being removed, it's not going to change when it opens back up, it's just, you know, being maintained right now. Construction walls are up around a food kiosk outside the Voyager's restaurant, and I think it's kind of cool how they have this little sign on the wall that says, Pardon Our Bubbles. Disney, of course, uses, like, Pardon Our Pixie Dust, and they kind of theme the signage that's on the walls. So I thought that was kind of cool, nice touch. Construction walls are also up over behind the Spice Mill restaurant and in front of the Shark Encounter and Shark's Underwater Grill. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. This is just usually a sidewalk. There's not a structure behind this, so I'm not sure if they're adding something or just resurfacing the area. But it's a big space that's covered up right now. But there has been a lot of construction though over at the future site of the Mako roller coaster. And you can see here a building has been put up and uh, of course it's just the shell of the building but it's still going to be constructed right here uh, in front of the bathrooms. I'm guessing this might be the entrance to the coaster. About two weeks ago though SeaWorld was able to go ahead and finish the lift um, that the coaster will take and you can see there in the background it's pretty tall and it's going to be right next to Kraken. I got two shots of what it looks like on the other side of the construction wall and you can see here that it's a lot of work in progress right now. Now the park has a couple of these relax and recharge stations that you can just sit out and uh, plug your phones into, but they were sponsored. They did have a Southwest sponsorship, but that has been removed. This was done a while back. I'm not sure what happened to their sponsorship, if they've completely pulled from SeaWorld, but there is no longer any Southwest branding, as far as I know, in the park. I spotted some leftover Christmas decorations over in the retention pond by the Nautilus Theater. The Killer Whale Underwater Viewing is currently not going on. There are construction walls up uh, behind Shamu Stadium, so guests can even walk on that pathway. I'm not sure when it will be returning, what exactly is being done, but as of right now, you cannot see the Shamu family underwater. Recently added next to Mama's Pretzel Kitchen is this Midway game here that is themed to the Pretzel Kitchen, and you toss some pretzel rings, I guess, and it's kind of cool. Over at the Wild Arctic, the extended queue area has been removed and is now just a nice area to sit down in the shade and recharge your phones and electronics and just relax. During the Christmas celebration, this is where you can watch the acapella group perform for the Polar Express. In the waterfront area of the park, I got some pictures of the street performers interacting with the guests and just having a good time. And you know who else was having a good time? Topher the Squirrel. Topher the Squirrel was looking for some food over by the Sea Fire Grill, and uh, he's gained some weight, as you can see. I think he's been eating a lot over there at SeaWorld, uh, so I think he should watch his weight. But he would love it if you said hello in the comments below, and of course, always give Photo Finds a thumbs up. Well, that does it for this edition of Photo Finds, but before I go, I wanted to wish Eric Feliciano, one of my viewers that I see comments every week, I love it. Thank you so much, sir, for being so kind and following Patrick and I on Florida E-Ticket, as well as me here on Photo Finds. I hope you have a great birthday and a happy belated birthday to Matt and Banks with Attractions Magazine. I hope you guys had a fantastic birthday celebration. And uh, I hope all of you that have a birthday this month make it a great year and have a great day. And as always, make sure you guys subscribe to Orlando Attractions Magazine. See us on Florida E-Ticket on Saturdays. And get out, have fun, and enjoy the parks.